Good afternoon and welcome to the Ohio Association for College Admission Counseling's Virtual College Fair. We're so glad you've joined us today to learn about some colleges and universities. This is a webinar format, so as participants, our panelists cannot see you, nor can they hear you, but they would love to hear from you. So if you've got questions for any of our panelists, please feel free to type those into the Q&A box at any time, and our panelists will respond directly to you. During the presentation, our panelists may also drop information into the chat box. They will drop things like their email address or their, vi their visit information. So keep an eye on that as well and be sure to copy that information down. This is just one of many sessions that is being offered through this virtual college fair. So once we are completed with this session, certainly go back, sign up for some additional sessions either today or in the coming days. And if you want to go back and review any of the things we talked about today, or catch a session that perhaps you didn't get to see, know that recordings of all the sessions will be found at strivescan.com slash Ohio within a day or two of the presentation. So with that said, that's my housekeeping, and I'm going to pass it on to our first presenter from Samford University. Hi, everyone. So glad you guys could be able to log on. I will share my screen soon. Perfect. All right, so hi everyone. My name is Elise Watford and I'm from Sanford University. We are located in Homewood, Alabama. Sanford was founded in 1841 and we are the, um, the 87th oldest institution in the nation. And we are a Christian-based community. So um, that's just very prevalent in everything that we do from the people that you meet to the professors that you have and just um, the entire community surrounding it. We are, um, we're, I like to think of Stanford as like a, a small, big school. So we have, we do value that one-on-one -on -one connection in those face-to-face um, -face, um, classes. So our enrollment is about 5,700 and our student to faculty ratio is about 13 to one. So um, predominantly classes range from um, 18 to 20 students. We also have an amazing um, study abroad program and 70% um, of our students are out of state. So Sanford is in like a, suit, a suitcase school. And basically what that means is um, students are staying on campus. You know, they aren't running home every weekend majority because um, you know they're out of state but they love to get in and you know immerse in the culture and make those um, connections with fellow students and have those um, opportunities and about 43 percent of our students do study abroad um, like I said because we are a small big school we do have those um, some of those opportunities that big schools have so we have 17 um, NCAA Division I sports. I have the opportunity of playing volleyball here during my um, undergrad years. Um, I was also a part of a Greek letter organization. We also have 166 student organizations for those who aren't as athletic and um, you know choose to do, go a different route. We um, also have 177 majors, so plenty of um, room to explore and find what you're passionate about and basically what uh, that's kind of what we say at Sanford, um, what problem do you want to solve in the world? And that's kind of our funny way of um, saying, you know, like, you know, what are you interested in? What can you see yourself making the biggest impact in the world um, later on down the line? And here is, it's probably our most important thing. This is our freshman admission timeline. So August 1st is when everything opens, all applications open up. And um, October 1st is when that FAFSA becomes available. And then um, you can see around November, early November, you'll start to see admission notifications coming in. And our December 1st deadline is definitely, definitely our most important deadline of our admission timeline. That is when a lot of our scholarship opportunities um, become available. And um, it just such it 
you know, if you take advantage of that, just set yourself up to be in a great position um, later on down the line when, you know, it comes down to crunchy numbers and you want to make sure that you've taken advantage of all of those opportunities that we do have to offer. But like I said, if you do miss out on our December 1st deadline, it isn't the end of the world. We also have our February 15th deadline, which is um, additional um, scholarships that will become available. That's also our FAFSA priority date. So if you get your FAFSA in um, before that deadline or on that deadline, then we can guarantee that you know, you'll be in definitely one of the first rounds to get your, you know, your FAFSA information back. And so you can plan accordingly and you know, try to work out um, the rest of the um, stuff throughout the admission timeline. And March is when our orientation begins for freshmen. We actually have that going on now. Um, and it's been a huge success so far. Um, a lot of our orientation slots and um, has been filling up pretty, pretty quick. So that's been very popular. And then May 1st is, decision, uh, is our decision deadline. So if we all know how, um, I guess how frustrating and draining the college admission process can be. So, you know, Sanford wants to give you ample time to, you know, do your research and make sure that Sanford is the best fit for you and making sure that, you know, you're, you want to make the best decision for the next four years. Here is our um, admission, our application checklist. So you can see we um, have a holistic process. So Sanford, we like to get a look at not only the student, but who you are as a person, because that's definitely something that Sanford wants to invest in. We wanna make sure that not only are we uh, recruiting the best people that fit Sanford, but we also want you guys to feel that Sanford is definitely the place for you. So um, we have a very holistic application process. Um, one of my favorite things is reading um, students' essays. It's just, it kind of brings, um, brings you guys like full circle. So, um, you know, we're so used to seeing like test scores and also our sorts of um, numbers and classes and grades, but um, the essay really gives us a great insight into who you are and what you wanna do with the rest of your life. So that's a good thing. Um, on, you can see by official test scores, there's also an asterisk. So this year um, to accommodate for the pandemic, we allowed um, incoming freshmen to, uh, defer from their um, official test score so they could apply tests optional just based on um, the limited availability of the standardized test throughout, um, you know, throughout this past year. We had that option available and it was a great success. And um, I'm not exactly sure if that's something that's going to be offered for this next um, admission timeline, but um, what I would do is to go ahead and try to take those tests anyways, just in case, um, you know, we choose not to offer that and you can already be ready. And so yeah, um, all this to say that, you know, Sanford has worked really, really hard during the pandemic to make ourselves as have a make have our students have a, a normal experience as possible. So 86% of our classes were in person this fall and 86% around the same percentage is this um, semester, but next semester we plan on being fully operational and fully functional. So guys, we also have um, campus tours going on six days out of the week. So please, if you do get a chance to come to Sanford, take that advantage and really um, immerse in our culture and our um, experience. So thank you. Thanks so much, Elise. Our next presenter is from the University of Alabama. Hello, everyone. I'm Kelly Watson with the University of Alabama, and I'm going to share my screen as well. So welcome. At the University of Alabama, legends are made every day from the athletic fields to the research labs. There are so many opportunities available for you at University of Alabama. And I'm excited to share some of the highlights about Bama um, that, and what could lie ahead for you when you're at school. UA is located in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, um, which is a small city about 45 minutes from Birmingham. And we are um, about nine and a half hours from Columbus. And you can kind of figure it out from what city you're in from there. Our biggest business is Mercedes-Benz. We also have a concert venue that brings in some great performers, a community college, lots of lakes, lots of um, parks and a river, great dining, great shopping, cultural events, and all of that. We were founded in 1831, and we draw almost 60% of our students from out of state. 
Our total enrollment has grown to almost 38,000 with our freshman class of 6,764 students this year. In addition to the benefits of a large research institution, we also maintain a small campus feel. Our student to faculty ratio is 23 to one. We have over 200 academic programs available for undergraduates. And um, we also have majors within eight different academic colleges. So there's a lot to choose from, um, including engineering, uh, arts and sciences, business, nursing, communications, et cetera. Our Honors College works with students who want an additional challenge and in every single major. In addition to our general honors program, we also have six selective programs, which are our Randall Research Scholars Program, University Fellows Experience, our Blunt Scholars Program, McCullough Institute for Pre-Medical Scholars, the STEM Path to the MBA, and the Create Path to the MBA. We also offer a new college, which allows students to des design their own major, something interdisciplinary. Research, co-ops, internships, study abroad, and other practical experiences are available for students in every single major. We have a lot of opportunities for you to get involved in campus. There's over 600 student organizations, which range from Greek life to campus ministries, honor societies, professional organizations, forming arts, division one athletics in the Southeastern Conference and intramural sports. Our application process is pretty straightforward. Um, you can apply using Alabama's application on our own website or for the fall of 2022, we'll also be using the Common App. Um, so you can choose which way, we don't have a preference between the two. We're rolling admissions um, starting with the application July, August and give our first decisions in September. Um, this year, we did not require an ACT or SAT. We are still reviewing policies for next year and we'll publicize those on our website as soon as they're available. Um, transcripts can be sent in from your counselors, either regular mail or we have several electronic options as well. Average freshman, uh, averages for our freshman class were a 3.83 GPA, a 27 ACT, and we have 221 National Merit Scholars in our freshman class, just giving you an idea. We offer a lot of scholarships to our out-of-state students trying to make it an affordable option for all of you. Approximately 40% of our students receive automatic scholarships, which are those that are on the left side, starting with a 3.5 GPA and a 25 or a 1200, or a 3.0 with a 27 or 1260. These criteria and values are for this year's seniors. We will review them and post those for this year's juniors sometime this summer. We also offer competitive academic scholarships for those students who do not have a test score. And those we're looking at your core GPA, those math, science, foreign language, history, um, and English classes. And then we're also looking at a scholarship application to see all of your resume type information, your service, your leadership, your activities and work experience and anything that you can share about ourselves. We rank you against our other scholarship applicants um, to see what tier you might fall in, as well as your GPA. We also have scholarships for National Merit Scholars, National, National African American, Hispanic, Indigenous, and Rural and Small Town Recognition Scholars. Details available, scholarships.ua.edu. We encourage you to come to campus, visit, explore. Um, it's the best way to really feel if the school is a good fit for you. We are doing both virtual and on-campus information sessions and tours right now. Um, gobama.ua.edu slash visits is where you can find more information, but you can also contact me and I can help you arrange a visit as well. Um, we want to show you around the school that we love. And this is my contact information. I'm happy to work with you throughout the whole admission process. Um, please reach out to me at kelly.bama at ua.edu whenever you have any questions and roll tide. Thanks so much, Kelly. Our next presenter is from Ferris State University. Hello, everyone. I'm Deb from Ferris State University, and I am the coordinator of out-of-state recruitment. And I'd like to thank you for taking the time to be here today. 
Ferris was established in 1884, and we have about 11,000 students. So we are a mid-sized school. About 8,000 of those students are on campus. Our students come from 44 different states and 39 countries, but that being said, most of our students are from West Central Michigan, largely because that's where we're best known. We are located um, about an hour north of Grand Rapids or about four hours from Toledo. And um, our student to teacher ratio is 16 to one. The average class size is about 23. Uh, as far as the average GPA at the school, it's about a 3.33, but that's not the requirement to get in. And a quarter of our students are uh, considered first generation. And so we have extra support for those students. Uh, what it does take to get in is a 2.5 GPA minimum. We do look for a 17 ACT or a 900 SAT. However, we've been test optional for the last few years and we will continue to be test optional. Um, if you have a 2.75, you're welcome to apply test optional. If for some reason COVID has prevented you from taking your test, we do have currently GPA only admissions. Uh, so if you've been affected by COVID, let us know and we can help you out. Our application is free. It's on our website and you can apply anytime. It's rolling admissions. And so we have no deadlines uh, and we do not charge out of state tuition. So just so you know that, uh, we have about 190 different academic programs and we have associates, bachelor's, master's and doctoral degrees. I'm not going to go through all of them, but in the College of Arts and Sciences, these are the major programs that we have. Some of the big ones are the pre-med, pre-biology, pre-pharmacy and optometry, um, Spanish, integrative studies, journalism. In the College of Business, we have accountancy, professional golf and professional tennis management. Also graphic media management, television and digital media production, digital animation and game design. And in the College of Engineering Technology, we have automotive, automo um, sorry, heavy equipment. We have architecture and sustainability, welding, which actually does have a wait list. So if you're interested in welding, apply as soon as you're aware of that. Um, and then in the College of Health Professions, we have dental hygiene, molecular diagnostics, and nursing all the way through the doctoral degree. We do have two major doctoral degrees. One is pharmacy and one is optometry. Both of those are a three plus four program. So in seven years, you are a doctor of your field. Um, and the uh, School of Optometry is one, the only one in Michigan and one of only, I think, 22 in the country. So it is kind of a, a cool thing there. The building is new and they are building a new pharmacy building as well. Uh, as far as supporting our students, once you come to campus, we do have a lot of ways to support you. Uh, education and career counseling, we have free tutoring, we have structured learning assistance classes, academic literacy center with a writing center where you can submit papers and get feedback before you hand them in for a grade, disability services, as well as the LGBTQ plus office, M Office of Multicultural Student Services, um, the Latinx office. So there is a lot that we have to offer to support you as well. And there is a clinic right on campus also. Uh, we do require freshmen only to live on campus and just for that first year, but many of our students choose to live on campus all four years. Uh, we do have residence halls, which are the traditional dorms, but then we also have suite style living and apartments that are available if you choose to stay after your first year. Um, we do want you to get involved on campus when you come to campus. And one way to do that is through live, learn communities. Uh, the honors program is the oldest and the best known, <laughs> but there are several others. They all have similar uh, goals in mind. They're all very community focused. They give you enhanced op academic opportunities, leadership and peer mentorship. Uh, but if you choose not to do one of those, you can get involved in one of our 250 registered student organizations. They're academic-based, faith-based or special interest-based. And if you can't find one you love, you can create your own and then leave a legacy when you graduate. We also have Boat Dog Beginnings, The Big Event, Music for Life, which is a way to stay involved in music Music and earn money while you're doing that, and then many study abroad programs and internships that are available. Our athletics are Division II, so there are potential scholarships available. Our varsity 
uh, teams or, or sorry, sports are listed on the screen there. And then if you'd like to be involved in sports, but not in a varsity sport, we do have club sports and intramural sports. And again, if you can't find one you love, you can create your own. Um, the equestrian club is very cool, as is the esports. So feel free to like peruse and see what you can find and see if there's something out there that you'd like to join. But joining does get you involved on campus, give you a voice on campus, and it helps you to make that transition from home to campus much easier. Uh, the cost of education, and every university has a cost of attention attendance calculator on their website, but just to give you an idea, you're looking at about $12,000 for tuition, um, room and board is about $10,000, and then with books, fees, a few trips home a semester, you're looking at about 25 or 26,000 a year before any financial aid hits. Um, remember that we do not charge more for out of state students. And this number is before any kind of financial aid or scholarships hit. Uh, we do have merit scholarships that are based on your test scores and your GPA, or if you come in test optional just on your GPA. And if you'd like to contact me with any questions, uh, my email is on the screen. You can feel free to do that. Thank you very much for taking the time to listen to me today. Thanks. Thank you, Deb. Our next presenter is from Penn State. All righty, everybody. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited to be with you all today. Bear with me while I pull up our shared screen. Um, so my name is Jordan Garrigan. I am the admissions counselor and recruiter for your area. Uh, I'm also a Penn State alum, so I graduated in 2016. Uh, if you have any questions for me about student life, feel free to drop it in the Q&A. Uh, but to tell you a little bit about Penn State. Uh, so we are a top 1% world-class world, cl world class university. Uh, we were recently ranked in the top 50th out of 18,000 institutions globally. Um, and this is not just due to our academics. This is also inclusive of the resources we provide students and the support that we provide students on campus. So uh, it's a really, really remarkable place to be. Uh, and those numbers are evident in our 85% graduation rate and then our 93% retention rate. Um, the 85% graduation rate is about 25% above the national average. And then if you aren't familiar with what retention rate means, it means that we have all of our students come in for their first year and 93% of students will choose to stay for their following years, uh, which is pretty cool. It basically tells us as staff members that not only are students finding success at Penn State, but they are also enjoying their time at Penn State, which is really important. Bunch of other things that I would love to talk about here, but again, we only have six minutes. Uh, we do have over 300 study abroad programs available to you. Uh, we are a research one institution. We allot about $900 million in undergraduate research. Uh, although we are a large institution, we have about 46,000 undergraduate students at one campus alone. Uh, we do have a student to faculty ratio of about 16 to one. So we have lots of opportunities for you to kind of dwindle that big campus down into a little bit smaller campus. So here's one way that you can do that. We do have 20 different campuses that you can choose from. So the 46,000 student campus that I was talking about is that University Park campus. Um, at the largest campus. It's also our most competitive campus, um, but we also have 19 other Commonwealth campuses that you can choose from. And the only difference between those campuses is they range in size from about 500 students all the way to 5,000 students. So you kind of get to pick and choose what works best for you. Uh, not all of our campuses offer all majors. So you want to take a look at the major that you're choosing and if it's available at that campus. One thing that we do is if you do want to start at a campus, but your major isn't offered there, so for example, pre-medicine uh, is only available at that University Park campus, what you can do is you can do what's called the two plus two program. You can spend two years at a smaller campus and then transition to that University Park campus um, for your remainder two years, which is really cool. You kind of get to start small and then grow as you grow as a student. Uh, so we do have 275 academic programs for you to choose from. These are all housed in our academic colleges. So if you apply to Penn State, you're going to be applying into an academic college. So for example, I graduated from the College of Health and Human Development with a major in Human Development and Family Studies. So you're going to uh, kind of have a very, very broad academic program, um, but you have a selective major that you are majoring in. Uh, if you're like me and you didn't know what you wanted to do when you got to college, that's okay. Uh, we do have an entire college called the Division of Undergraduate Studies uh, that allows you to go in as undecided and then declare your major at the end of your two years. So 
Uh, again, if you don't know, that's totally okay. So hopefully you're not going to be in the classroom 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Penn State does offer over 1,200 different clubs and activities for you to get involved in. Uh, and these clubs and activities range from club sports, intramural sports, to arts and theater. Uh, we have various different Greek life organizations, lots of philanthropic organizations on campus, uh, leadership organizations, pretty much anything you can think of, uh, it is available for you. Uh, if you come to campus and you find that something that you're interested in is not available to you, you and nine friends can create your own club or organization on campus. So you kind of just come to uh, the student organization board and you say, hey, this isn't available for us. Can we start this? They're more than happy to help you out there. Uh, Penn State is known for our Penn State Dance Marathon. That's actually in the background of this picture here. Um, you'll see a bunch of students holding their hands up. We actually just kind of wrapped it up last month. Uh, we did our first virtual thon. Uh, but about 20,000 students will get involved in this each year. It is the largest student-run philanthropy in the entire world. And students raise money for pediatric cancer. So uh, our students this year raised about $10 million for kids with pediatric cancer, which is a really, really cool thing. It's really awesome to be a part of something that's bigger than you and bigger than Penn State. So it was a really uh, remarkable event that students are able to participate in. Penn State was one of the first institutions to implement diversity and inclusion into their strategic plan. Uh, this is an ongoing effort. It continues day to day and it continues year to year. So as you come into Penn State, uh, you can be a part of the clubs, organizations, groups on campus that are fostering diversity and inclusion. Uh, and this does not just start from students, this stems all the way up to our faculty and staff as well. So on the application, what we need from you, there are four things that we do need from you. We will need an online application. So through the Common App, the Coalition App, or you can go directly through our website. Uh, once you click Submit, you will, oh, it went sideways. Usually it goes all the way through. Um, you will be prompted to create a My Penn State profile. So that profile is going to be your home base for all things Penn State. Uh, it's going to have your checklist, your decision, everything posted there. So these are all the fun things that we need from you. We did decide to go test optional this year. So if you want to submit your test scores, you can, but you don't have to. Uh, and last but not least, the last thing I will show you is our uh, estimate of your eligibility at Penn State. Again, these are ranges. You don't need to fully have these numbers. This is our middle 50% of our current first year cohort. So uh, take a look at this. If you don't see yourself within those numbers, no worries. It doesn't mean there's not a place for you at Penn State. Uh, you might just need to be a little more flexible. So thank you so much. I had a pleasure being with you all today. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, drop it in the Q&A and I'm happy to answer. Thanks, Jordan. An excellent point. Uh, students, as you're participating in today's event, please be sure to drop those questions in the Q&A. And my panelists, if you have anything you want to share with our participants, please be sure to drop those in the chat. And now I'd like to introduce Claire from Willamette University. Thanks so much, Julie. Hello, everyone. Thanks so much for joining me. As Julie said, my name is Claire. I'm one of the senior assistant directors in the Office of Admission at Willamette University. And we'll go ahead and jump right in here. Willamette University is located in Salem, Oregon. We were founded in 1842. We are actually the oldest institution in the Western United States. We were a university before the state of Oregon was recognized as a state of the union, believe it or not. Uh, we are a four-year private liberal arts institution supported by three professional schools. So our College of Law, our Atkinson Graduate School of Management, as well as the Claremont School of Theology. Additionally, we're one of the 40 colleges that change lives. If you haven't had a chance yet to check out the organization called the Colleges That Change Lives, I would encourage you to do so. A quick number snapshot for you here. We have 1,800 undergraduate students and 600 graduate students, so we are primarily an undergraduate institution. We have over 52 academic programs, so there's certainly no shortage of opportunity of things to study for you there. And the overwhelming majority of our students will have more than their singular major, a double major with a minor, you name it. A couple fun facts. We own 305 acres of land just north of our campus, which is called Xena. Um, it's what I like to call kind of an academic playground for particularly our environmental science and biology students. They will take samples and bring them back to our lab on campus. So very hands-on experiences there. 
Additionally, we have a 54 year partnership with Tokyo International University in Japan. Their satellite campus is called Tokyo International University of America, located right here on our campus at Willamette. And they send about 100 international students over every year. It's a wonderful cross-cultural experience for our students to be able to engage with international students right here in Oregon. We're also 76 feet away from the state capital in Oregon. For those of you who are unfamiliar, Salem is the capital of Oregon. And I'll show you a picture here in a few moments. We are quite literally across the street from the capital building. And 80% of the interns in that building are Willamette students. So I think that speaks really well to the outside of the classroom experiences that our students can have. And last but certainly not least, we have over 66 study abroad opportunities in about 45 different countries around the world. So it's pretty much your oyster at that point. Again, since we can't be together today, I'll show you a few pictures of our favorite spots on campus. These are called the star trees. They were planted on Willamette's 100th birthday, and they are the largest sequoia trees outside of the Redwood Forest in California. They get their name because if you walk under them and look up, it actually does create the shape of a star in the sky, which I think is pretty cool. And then you can see the Capitol building again right there across the street. And this is the original building of Willamette University back when we were founded in 1842. This is my personal favorite spot on campus here. This is called the Mill Stream that runs the heart of our campus and it connects to the Willamette River, which is where we get our name. This building in the background here is our undergraduate library with a beautiful Wickle, pardon me, Whipple clock tower here. And this green space is kind of the social hub of campus. It's hard to walk past this without seeing a familiar face. Students laying on black blankets or in their hammocks over here, um, working on homework, enjoying lunch or just basking in the sun too. This picture gives you an idea of where we're located within Salem, very much a college town. Um, so here's our campus. Again, here's the state capital, just orient yourself quickly. And then this is downtown Salem. We've highlighted some of our students' favorite coffee shops and restaurants, so about two block walk there. You can also walk to the movie theater, you can walk to the grocery store, and we're right across the street from the Amtrak station. So it's really easy to get up to Portland if you just wanted to go explore, or also if you needed to get on an airplane to head back to Ohio. We're about an hour to the coast, an hour to Portland, and an hour to the mountains. So really centrally located within the state of Oregon. I'll talk a little bit about our academic experience here in the hopes that you'll do your own search um, with us after we're done meeting in the short time today. Our hearth system is very unique to Willamette. They're what I like to call academic family rooms. So for the sake of example, today we'll talk about the chemistry hearth. Let's say you had a chemistry class earlier that day and then you wanted to go study in the chemistry hearth. Again, there's couches and tables and comfy chairs where you can be studying with people you had class with earlier that day. And then right across the hall are the chemistry faculty offices. So it's kind of this open door policy with great access to faculty. Um, and each one of our academic departments has a hearth. Experiential learning, this is one of our general education requirements. It's called an experiential learning credit. And we require students to do one of three things before they graduate, study abroad, do research, or have an internship. It's a wonderful opportunity to kind of build your resume before you're ready to jump into the real world, if you will, after college. I mentioned earlier that we have dual degree programs and you can see them all listed here. This top bullet point are the dual degree programs within Willamette University at our graduate programs. And then our three plus two forestry and engineering programs are at affiliate universities. And if you have specific questions, you can definitely follow up with me after, happy to chat in more depth about those. And we just launched a few new undergraduate programs. So Willamette is certainly expanding academic wise. We have a new undergraduate major in business, public health and data science. Here's a fun fact for you. Our first graduate was a woman. Her name was Emily York and she graduated in 1877 and we um, were one of the earliest co-educational institutions in the United States. I know that we are running short on time here. I've got about a minute left, but I wanna talk a little bit about life outside the classroom because that's such a huge piece of the Willamette experience. You can see that our students are doing about two or three things outside of the classroom and there's over a hundred clubs and student organizations. So no shortage of opportunities to join in on the fun there. Um, one of the most prominent clubs and organizations is our campus recreation and outdoor program. If you wanted to go skiing, snowboarding, surfing, whitewater rafting, you name it, lots of opportunities to do so. We also have multicultural and affinity groups that you can be a part of if you want to be in community with those who identify the way that you do. We have 19 NCAA Division III sports, over 20 music ensembles and performing arts clubs, as well as fraternity and sorority life. Um, and here's a little snapshot about our application process, a common application exclusive school with merit scholarship, competitive scholarships, and financial aid. And I will leave you lastly here with uh, my contact information. I am your admission counselor, so if you have any specific questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. I'm always happy to chat, and the best of luck to you in your college search process. 
Thank you so much. And last but not least, this afternoon slash evening, Pacific University, Oregon. Perfect. Well, good evening, everyone from Pacific University out here in Oregon, as our name implies. My name is Derek Nagley. I am actually your admissions counselor here at Pacific University. And so what that means is when you apply, I'm actually the one on the other end who's going to work with you. I get the pleasure of working with all the students from Ohio. And so when you um, that application goes through, you get to know me as a person here at Pacific. And I want to tell you a little bit about our amazing university. And we're going to start out with where is Pacific? So you're learning a little bit about Oregon with us in Willamette being here today. We're located in the northwest corner of Oregon in a little town called Forest Grove. So it's an amazing middle of the road where in a half an hour, you can be sitting in downtown Portland where there's a million people. You can fly into the Portland International Airport and get out to campus in about an hour. Or in an hour, you can be sitting on the Oregon coast. So it's this amazing area where you can explore everything the northwest has to offer whether that's hiking in the Tillamook National Forest or being able to go work at places like Nike, Intel, Xerox, and Columbia, you have that amazing middle where you get to meet in Forest Grove itself. And Pacific itself, as I mentioned, is a small private liberal arts school. We offer over 65 different majors, minors, and programs to our incoming students. So you're going to hear a lot of different programs mentioned today. We're best known for things like the free health professions, optometry, physical therapy, but we have nationally and regionally ranked creative writing, education, and business programs as well. So at Pacific, you are going to find what you want to study while you're here. And we offer all of these programs to about 1,800 undergraduate students and about 2,000 graduate students. So you're going to meet a lot of different students on campus, but you're going to be known. We treat all of our students as if they're in an honors college. There's no extra steps for that. Instead, you actually get to interact with your professors in small classes, averaging about 19 students. Our big lecture halls only seat 60 or 70 kids. So that's as big as they get. And in those classes, you are always taught by a professor. There is no TAs doing any teaching, which means your professors are going to know your name, they're going to call on you, and you're going to get a better education because you have that interaction with those professors while you're here at Pacific. And most importantly, we know it's a big commitment to go to college. So we give all of our students here at Pacific a four-year guarantee. So what that means, if you come to Pacific, you get a four-year education, not a fifth year or a sixth year or a victory lap, but you actually get to come in and in those four years, get an amazing education in that small classroom atmosphere and walk out with that degree. And at the same time, we know it's really important that you don't just get a degree, but that you actually have a real life resume to back that up because that next step is really important. So at Pacific, we are one of the top private research universities in the Northwest. We offer our opportunities for internships, job shadowing and research at places like Nike or here on campus or being able to work in the community starting your freshman year of college, not waiting till you're a junior or senior, so that you have time to try things out, that you can change your mind and still be on track to graduate in four years and have this really amazing background to be able to take that next step right away when you go into the working world. And at the same time, we also know our students need a break. So we encourage our students to be active on campus. Our average senior is involved in three clubs or sports that have nothing to do with what they're studying. Our students like to be active, whether that's in some of our 70 different clubs and organizations and things like student government, Greek life, academics, or even our Hawaii club, you're going to find those people who identify with things that you're excited about and be able to build on that group while you're here. That might also mean performing in our performing arts and everything from a theater production to our mariachi band, or being part of our varsity athletics here at Pacific, where we have 24 NCAA Division III athletics in the Northwest Conference. Again, our students are active and they love to be active and keep building on that while they're here. And they don't have to just pick one of these. Our students can do two or three different things and mix and match while they're a student here and still be on track to graduate from Pacific. We also want our students to be able to take that education outside of the classroom. Whether that's, again, exploring this beautiful Northwest that's behind me, getting up into the mountains, learning to surf on the Oregon coast, or taking classes in outdoor leadership. Maybe that means study abroad. I know for many students that is something that they're very excited and want to do while they're in college. We have over 27 sites in 17 different countries around the world, both English and non-English speaking countries, and two to three week winter term classes that you can be able to do and get some of those opportunities to study outside of the US. Or be able to give back through community service. Pacific is consistently on the list, the president's list of community service colleges. We are very proud of the amount of student work that goes back into giving that back to the community, whether it's here in Forest Grove or whether that's in one of those international classes where you might go to Romania for two weeks and build houses for Habitat for Humanity. And then the admissions part. So how do you actually get to Pacific? 
Now, as I mentioned, I'm gonna be your admissions counselor. So you're gonna apply using common application. And here's the amazing thing with Pacific. We have no in-state or out-of-state tuition and no in-state or out-of-state scholarships, which means when you apply, whether you're from Ohio, Oregon, Montana, or Hawaii, it doesn't matter. You're looking at the same opportunities. No extra paperwork, whether that's for admission or for scholarships. And when you apply, you're gonna use the Common App, you're gonna send in a transcript. You can send in test scores if you feel it makes a, a strong impact on your application, but they are not required at Pacific. We are test optional and we're test optional going forward. So we're very proud of that holistic review of your application. We also have opportunities for you to come visit campus if you are a senior um, to earn scholarship that way. And when you apply, you're also going to be applying for our merit scholarships range between 15 and $27,000 a year for all four years you're here at Pacific. And again, it doesn't matter what state you're from, you're in the pool for these scholarships. We also offer opportunities for those students who are talented in things like music, dance, and theater, speech and debate, mathematics, robotics, to apply for additional scholarship. And if you are a senior watching today, we are still accepting applications via rolling admission, so you can still come for the fall of 2021 and be awarded scholarship. If you're a junior, you get to work with me next year, and we'll have all of these opportunities in front of you. So thanks again for listening. I'll put my contact information into the chat, and I look forward to helping all of you become boxers. Thank you so much. At this point, I'd like to have all of my presenters turn their cameras and their microphones back on, and we're going to do a quick round robin question, and we'll go in that same order that you presented. Elise, are you with us? Awesome. Here she comes. So the question for all of you tonight is, what is an interesting or fun fact about your school that you haven't already mentioned? Elise. Um, an interesting, oh, um, we just got a new university president. So uh, our last president just retired last week. And um, actually, it's only he's, he's only our 19th president in 180 years. So I feel like that's a cool and fun fact. His name's Beck Taylor, and he's no um, stranger to our campus. So we're all very, very lucky and excited to have him step into this new role. Outstanding. Kelly, how about it at Bama? Well, I think a lot of people know us for our football team. And yes, we were the national champions this year, um, but we have a lot of other strong organizations and teams on campus. And in fact, our forensics council, which is speech and debate, they just won the national championships yesterday and um, they've won more national championships than our football team. So <laughs> excellent, excellent. How about at Ferris State, Deb? Well, our founder, uh, Woodbridge Nathan Ferris, was also Michigan's governor from 1913 to 1917 and a senator from 1923 to 1928. During that time, he was also the president of the university and the president of the local bank. And he so forward, yeah, he was a very busy guy. He was so forward thinking that our very first graduating class in 1884 had 15 people and five of them were women. Outstanding. I thought you were going to say he was just like open up the drawer at the bank and hand out scholarships and stuff. Wouldn't that be amazing? <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't quite that nice. <laughs> there you go. Jordan, how about at Penn State? Sure. So Penn State is uh, not just known for football and sports. Also, we're also known for um, we have incredible ice cream on campus. So if you uh, come to campus, definitely uh, get some ice cream. Ben and Jerry. So the Ben and Jerry's ice cream actually studied at Penn State. So um, very fun fact, they learned how to make ice cream at Penn State. So if you come by, stop by the creamery and get some ice cream. Excellent. Claire. Willamette University has broken a Guinness World Record twice for the largest game of red light, green light. If that doesn't speak to our <laughs> campus community, I'm not sure what does. Um, but we won it in 2013. Uh, fun, even funner fact, the NFL stole it from us in 2014, and we won it back in 2015 and still hold that title to this day. Awesome. Oh my gosh, all the fun facts. And Derek, take us home here. Absolutely. So one really fun thing with Pacific is actually about 15% of our students come from the islands of Hawaii. And they put on our largest event every year, which makes it really fun because they bring an amazing culture with them. And we actually host the largest student run luau anywhere on the mainland US outside of Hawaii. So outside of Hawaii, we win. And because it's all student run, actually any student on campus can take classes and dance on stage in front of 4,000 people including the president of our university, our entire football team before. So it's a really fun, big event on campus that also gets to hold a record. So it's pretty fun. 
Wow. See the things you learn about colleges and universities. This is fantastic. Thank you all for presenting about your schools and sharing those fun facts. I just have a couple of things to share with our participants. Um, certainly after you finish today and you click out of this meeting, you will get a short four question survey. If you could take a few seconds, answer those questions, help us improve these programs for future students or maybe for yourself, um, we would really appreciate that. Again, this is just the start of tonight's fun. So if you have a few more hours, we have a few more sessions, go ahead and sign up for those. And if there are any sessions you missed or wanna go back and review any of the things that our presenter shared, please do that at strivescan.com slash Ohio. So on behalf of all of our presenters and StriveScan and the Ohio Association for College Admission Counseling, thanks again for joining us and have a great night. <laughs>